Something new from Poundland. It's a, a five pound item and it's a pass infrared triggered USB powered LED strip. Let's get out the packet and take a look at it. There's one thing that caught my attention about this that makes it very worthwhile. Uh, well, that's based on what it's like inside. And it's the text in the little center itself which says input DC 5 volts to 24 volts. So for that money, you're actually getting a universal voltage sensor here that could also be used for 12 volt tape. But as it is, it comes with a little uh, USB lead, sticky pad, presumably for the back of that, and some waterproof style LED tape. Is that it? That's everything. Yep. I'm not sure. It doesn't really say how much you get of this. Let's measure it. I shall do a quick measurement in this, if I can get a tape off it. Tape is off. No, it's not. The tape is not off. Some of the tape's off. Right, I shall unravel this. So this is the standard 5 volt tape that you can cut. It's got a resistor with, uh, with each LED, and you can cut it every single LED position. So I shall unroll the whole lot. And I'll throw that little rogue LED that has made an appearance on the side of the bench. Oh, they've actually stuck it to the middle of the reel. Right, tell you what, just give us a second. One meter, two meters. Two meters of LED tape. Oh, that's all right. So let's plug this into a USB power supply. I'll bring in a Poundland USB power supply. It seems appropriate. And I shall plug in a power analyzer. Now, is this going to have a light sensor in it? I'm going to guess that this is based on a BISS0001 because it's got the little uh, potentiometer at the side that you can actually adjust the, uh, the delay time of how long it stays on, which is quite nice, actually, because uh, many of them don't have that. So we'll plug this in here, input, and we'll plug this here, which is the output, uh, and I shall put it to its longest setting, which uh, is five minutes. And I'm guessing from the fact it's not lit that it does have the dusk sensor. So if I cover this now, it is lit and it's drawing 760 milliamps. So uh, let's let's do the maths for that. 760 milliamps. 0.76 times 5 equals 3.8 watts. Okay, that's reasonable enough. Right, let's unplug this and take this unit to bits and see what it's like inside. I could see uses for this for uh, for the primarily for 12 volt use. Handy if it does go up to 24 volts though for the LED tape because that increases the amount you can run from it for a specific current. So to open this, I'm guessing that it is just held on by little latches here. I don't see screws. Now the question is, is it going to have the BISS0001 or is it going to be based on the sensor that everything's built in, including the timer? Oh, that's odd. That is very minimalist. Oh, that's unusual. Right, tell you what. Uh, one moment, please. I'm just going to take some pictures of this. Back again with pictures and after a quick kip. I don't know if it showed up in the first part of that video, but I was just struggling to stay awake. I had a quick kip and now I'm back to normal. So here's the back of the circuit board. It has the input jack for 5 to 24 volts in, and that does make sense now. Uh, and the output jack for the LED. It has the potentiometer here for setting the time delay, and on the back you've got the six solder pins associated with that passive infrared device, which is, uh, well I'll cover that another when I show you the schematic, and then there's an LDR solder connection to the back. Not a lot on the back of the circuit board. On uh, the front of the circuit board we have the magic. We have the PIR module, and this is a BS612. Don't rush to eBay to try and buy them because it's quite a specialist chip, and uh, I found one listing on AliExpress at £10 per module versus paying £5 for getting the complete thing with the module built into the circuit board of this support circuitry and two metres of LED tape and the USB lead. So not the best thing. It's not really aimed at, at the likes of us. It's aimed at manufacturers. So there's the LDR. And interestingly, they've got 
they can adjust nudge this the value of this resistor to match that LDR. So the incoming supply comes in at this side. We've got the positive, we've got two negative connections, positive two negative connections out. It's got a 7533 voltage regulator, 3.3 volt low dropout regulator, and I have to say, the quiescent current, the standby current of this unit is about 40 microamps in, in light, when the light sensor is illuminated, and when it goes darker, because that's for a potential divider, it drops to about 30 microamps, it's not that much. The output is switched by this little transistor down here, an AO9T, and there's two positions. I wondered if that was to allow for two different uh, pinouts, but in reality, they're both in parallel. So it's designed to actually increase its current carrying capacity or perhaps allow the use of cheaper MOSFETs. But these ones, the AO9T, seem to correlate to an AO3400, which is rated 5.8 amps at 30 volts. And with a when it's turned on at the sort of levels, voltage levels, this is operating at it. It's got an on-state uh, resistance of about 52 milliohms. So it's, a surprise, it's one of those little beefy transistors that can switch tons of current. However, uh, I always recommend not running them at their full whack. What else have we got here? We've got the potentiometer coming through from the other side in these three pins. Two pins are bound together. And then we've got a couple of resistors. One of them, the only resistor on the board that does this, it uses the uh, 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 code for that. That's a 100k resistor. They could have just written 104 and that would have been also 100k, but they've actually used the uh, 01D, is it, uh, code for this one. Uh, that's it. There's really not a lot. Everything is done in here. So let me show you the schematic. Here is the schematic. I shall zoom down a little bit further so it fills more of the available space. And I shall put the little module here for reference. So the incoming supply comes in on this jack. And two things happen. The, po the negative goes straight over to the, the uh, MOSFET to be switched to the output. The positive goes straight out over to the output, but the positive also goes to that little dinky voltage regulation in the back and generates the 3.3 volt rail for the circuitry. A couple of reasons for that. It means that it's got a very wide operating voltage range. Uh, this uh, regulator probably handles up to something like 30 volts. It's very low quiescent current, so it's not really going to, you know, it's never going to really get warm in any way with that sort of load. But the fact it regulates, even from 5 volts down to 3.3 volts, means that this always gets a nice stable supply. Because if you tried powering something like that from directly from, say, a 5 volt supply, as the LEDs turned on and off, the voltage rail would, uh, the, would waver up and down, and that would potentially cause instability in this chip. So by giving it its own dedicated smooth supply, it's rock steady 3.3 volts, helped by this capacitor here, it makes that very stable. After that, there are two inputs. So all the circuitry is contained on this little thing here. This is a pyroelectric device. If you were to look inside that, it would, it's got that little window on top. There, underneath, it's got two little sensors and they uh, react to body heat. They're basically, they're little like solar panels that react to body heat, but they're actually forming a bridge and uh, connected in reverse. So it takes, if there's a common level of, infrared radiation heat hitting them, they'll, they won't put out any significant difference. It's like having two batteries in inverse series that will cancel each other out. But what happens is if something passes in front of it and then this gets hotter first than this one, and then as it passes, this cools down and this one gets hot, it causes that uh, distinct uh, voltage difference. And that's what's detected by a little MOSFET inside that triggers that well doesn't trigger it but it basically acts like a variable resistor and that causes a voltage undulation which is detected by the circuitry inside and the reason these little lenses in the front are they're polythene lenses because the polythene is transparent to the uh, in the long wave infrared the heat the body heat the reason they've got all these wee dimples in them can i can i enhance those dimples oh no i over enhance the dimples uh the reason it's got all those little dimples is because by putting all those lenses in it means as you walk in front of it, you. this is how they, they beam shape infrared units as well. Uh, they, as you walk past, these lenses focus a little sort of blob, a little dot that wanders across these displays as you walk past. And that causes that sort of push-pull effect, that fluctuation that differentiates your body from the ambient background temperature. And also, when you look at the uh, passive infrared detectors on, like... Uh, alarm systems or the floodlights, you'll notice that they've got a 
The lenses are shaped to actually give them a fan shape pattern, but not look too high, not look too low, but actually put a shaped beam out. Or you get ones like this one uh, for ceilings where it basically it detects you from any position in the room. Complex little things, expensive little things to make. They have really taken a hit from the radar detectors, the little Doppler detectors. Hold on, let me grab some little Doppler detectors from the pile of junk at the back. Doppler detectors. Ten a penny, so much cheaper. In this one, it's just basically a few capacitors and a transistor, and that's kind of really hit the passive infrared industry quite hard. I would guess that's going to affect the pricing, although each has its own merits. The the passive infrared can't see through windows, but the Doppler can. That's not great for alarm systems. Uh, but each has its own in merits. The advantage is that this is much simpler, and you can mount it inside a completely sealed case without worrying about uh, having to have a lens poking through the front. The best alarm sensors actually combine pass infrared and Doppler, so if there's a false tripping in one, it won't actually trigger an alarm unless it sees both responding to different uh, inputs. But I digress, I have already digressed. Everything's being done by this little chip, and it's got six connections. It's got the positive connection, negative connection, it's got a sense connection, which can be varied between the negative rail plus to the positive rail of this chip. But if you tie it to the negative rail as it is done in this, it makes it at its most sensitive. And this thing is very, very sensitive. Even without that lens, it detects me standing at the bench. It has the light-sensitive resistor that uh, turns it off at uh, during the day. And that has been tuned by the, this value of resistor. So they've, they've basically they've used a standard 1 megohm resistor here to uh, act as just a, a reference point. In, in the bridge and then they've packed this up to the point by adjusting this uh, the value of this resistor they've fine-tuned the point at which this reaches the voltage threshold which will be a fixed voltage threshold that it actually detects day or night for the time delay it's using a 100k resistor it's using a potentiometer and then it's using this resistor down here just to cap it from going too low too close to the negative rail and that way they can actually set the time delay within two ranges um, and again, it's just a varying voltage going into that, and everything is done inside this chip based on that voltage. It's very simple. The output shown in the data sheet, I shall provide a link to the data sheet down below. It's an interesting little thing, but not easily available. Uh, but it normally shows a resistor in the output. But this, having said that, they're using a little MOSFET here. And the MOSFET, all, all it sees there, it's got a very high impedance. It's, it's basically, it's a... Well, as the name suggests, field effect transistor. It's a field between two uh, conductive surfaces inside with an insulator between them, effectively, that actually switches using a, a field. It's actually like a little dam, but it's pushing electrons down out the way like a little tap, but with no current flowing as such. It's very, very clever little devices, the MOSFET. It's very, very freaky, but very clever. So this thing does. It, it uh, works fine at uh, 5 volts up to... 24 volts. Uh, the only point it's going to cause a problem is if, if you get too close to the 3.3 volts, uh, this thing won't be able to regulate and you'll end up with any fluctuations in the power lines will result in that ripple which will keep re-triggering it. This is a common problem with these devices when the voltage drops, drops too low in battery operated systems. Once it reaches a certain level, they'll just keep re-triggering until the battery is flat. Uh, but there we go. Uh, there's not much else to say about it. It does operate from 5 to 24 volts and as such, this little thing from Poundland, for your £5, is a very, very useful little sensor in a nice little case um, that, let's see, how, do, how does this go in? It goes in like, yeah, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll try and put that together again later. Uh, but it's a nice sensor in a nice case. I should put the, the dome in it. That uh, just takes standard jack input and output. You're getting this standard USB lead. I'm guessing it'll be fairly high current-ish cables because it can handle a decent current. I will say I tested the LED tape. It works out about half a half an amp a meter if you power it directly from 5 volts. That might be because it's powering it from my beefy supply and there was no resistance in series with, of cables. Uh, the tape itself is, basically speaking, uh, cuttable every LED and there's one, L one LED and 150 ohm resistor in series with it all the way along but this can be cut on these copper pads to any length you desire and then you can reuse for every cut off. Now to prove that it operates at 12 volts that'd be quite a good thing to do. Let's get this out of the way. 
let's get the, the doodles out the way. Let's uh, zoom back out to get a larger field of view. Let's bring in some LED neon. Yes, that's going to upset the real neon people because they don't like it being called LED neon. They want to claim that neon is neon, which is reasonable. Enough. But uh, LED linear light strip is what we'll call it then. So let's plug this into the output marked LED. Let's uh, set this to its uh, minimum delay. I think it was there. And plug in a cheapy Chinese dangerous goodness knows what electrical separation there is inside this sensor. And I shall plug this in. And it lights up. And then it goes out, but it's not going to trigger again because uh, there is ambient light. So I shall turn the light off. Is that going to be enough that it's going to trigger now? No, it's actually... Did, oh, no, it's triggered now. And if I stay still enough, it should go off after 10 seconds because I think I set that to the 10-second setting. If I didn't, it'll keep me triggering. Is it going to go off? This is like watching paint dry. Not... Sure, it might be detecting, it's super sensitive, it might just be detecting my my bumping gums, my mouth just blabbing away here, I'll try it in the opposite end of the scale. I could try covering it. Uh, no, this is one of these moments that I feel awkward because it feels like it's not going to go off. Right, it's not going to go off, is it? Okay, right, uh, the light is coming back. It, it's pointless, uh, trying to record motion detectors when you're actually in front of it is, is just a terrible thing. Just for reference, which way would that have been? <laughs> to adjust it to the 10 seconds. That is in the 10 second, I think. Uh, I did test it. It is 10 seconds. I didn't test the five minute setting, but it does uh, certainly. It uh, times out after about 11 seconds. But there we go. It's pretty good. It's well worth the money if you want just this module on its own. It represents very good value for that. But you also get the little roll of uh, low voltage cold white LED tape too. So I'd say that's a win.